we start our session today with a station of Umul Kitab Al-Fatihah. Okay, in the last class, we talked about the fundamental of uh, fundamental units, fundamental particle, and fundamental force. <coughs> uh, so, we uh, stop at fundamental, what we call fundamental force. There are four fundamental force, which is, let me make it smaller, which is a gravity, electromagnetism, strong force, and weak force. And all this force is basically carried, the, the force carrying particle, uh, is photon, gluon, uh, and boson lah. So uh, today we basically want to go uh, a little bit detail in this fundamental force, especially in terms of electromagnetism, lah, because uh, the bonding that happen uh, between material, uh, for example, the ionic bonding, the covalent bonding, the whatever bonding. That is basically because of the electromagnetism. So this is what make you see the material that around you. Okay, we will touch also about gravity, and we also touch a little bit about strong force and weak force, so that you can get a generic idea lah about all this force. Okay, so let's go here. So we have fundamental force. We have uh, let me recap here. So here we have what we call we have force carrying particle. So let's say there are four. For example, we have photon, we have gluon, we have V boson, and then we have Z boson. So this basically the force carrying particle. Meaning that uh, in order for the four fundamental force to occur, this is the particle that carry the force itself. So this is this one is responsible. Oh, I don't change the the green lah. This is responsible for the are four thing. They are let's see, they are gravity. This is one that is uh, the one that you most familiar with. The second force that is you most familiar with is electromagnetism, electromagnetism, and then you have a uh, strong force, strong force, and also you have the weak force, weak force. In general, the gravity. Uh, is basically that what help you on earth and so on so let me put here uh, and the force carrying particle for gravity uh, as i said in the last class is still hypothetical meaning that uh, the scientist still doesn't know what is the particle that carry the gravity lah so but they give this hypothetical uh, name graviton this is only graviton. It's only hypothetical. This four force that you can see on the right here, proton, gluon, V, and the Z boson, is basically they already see, they already prove they are there. So electromagnetism is basically caused by uh, what we call the photon. Eh? Okay, the photon. Okay, photon is also the fundamental unit for the light. Okay. And the, we know the light is combination of electric and also magnetism. So that's why they, they are, they, they, the photon can also, uh, is also what we call responsible for the light. Okay. Uh, we will talk later on how this photon uh, sort of like responsible for electromagnetism. A strong force is basically the force that bind the proton together. I mean, uh, you have normally the opposite charge will repel. Okay. So that is electromagnetism. You have positive, you have negative. Opposite charge, eh, not repel. I mean, opposite charge will sort of like, sort of like uh, attract and uh, a similar charge will be uh, sort of like pull away lah, uh, push away. For example, in the nucleus of the atom, you have proton, right? Proton and proton cluster together. So what bind them together is a strong force, okay? So the strong force is basically uh, the force carrying particle for the strong force is a gluon. And the weak force is something that is uh, related to radioactive decay and so on. So this weak force is basically uh, the, the force carrying particle for this is uh, W and Z boson. Lah, Z boson. Okay. But before we go one by one, let's me let's we we ask ourselves first, what does it mean by force itself? What is force? What is force actually? Alicia, what is force? What is force? What do you know? When, when I say force, what comes to your mind? When I say force, F-O-R-C-E, what comes to your mind? Put color in, Huh, Alicia? 
force what come to your mind what is force if people ask you what is force people who are not in the scientific background they ask you what is force how do you answer that huh? anything if your sibling if your if your parent ask you Alicia what is force daya daya tu apa nak jawab macam mana <laughs> okay anyway uh, so force um, force is basically uh, daya lah in Malay uh, so it's basically push or pull attraction and so on so that's we call force lah but uh, in uh, what we call in physics there are certain uh, equation that define the force so you have seen before uh, I think I believe in your physics class you see that F equal to MA right the force equal to mass times the acceleration and the mass we know the what we call the the SI unit for mass is kg and then the acceleration is the meter over square over square so ms ms square lah ms square so that is basically uh, the force lah uh, the unit that we familiar of is basically uh, the, the unit this is the what you call that in the SI base unit but normally when we talk about force we normally also heard about newton right newton so 1 kg uh, is basically is related lah so 1 kg per meter per second square is basically equivalent to 1 newton okay <coughs> so uh, that's okay for the math as far as the math is concerned that's okay but then if people ask you how does it feel 1 newton because force is basically pushing or pulling of something or attraction or it's I mean the feeling lah so how much is one newton okay you know one newton is one kg over blah 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 and so on but then if people ask you the layman ask you how much is one newton uh, people can say people can sort of like give some uh, abstract idea about how weight is how, how heavy is one kilogram but in terms of force how much is one newton how much is one newton how much is one newton i mean normally when we talk about newton so this is newton eh? in newton in newton newton you know the some of the uh, parable the story i don't know whether it's true or not when the what we call the isaac newton go uh, sort of like uh, stay underneath the tree so this isaac newton and then they found that the the what we call the apple the apple fall down right the apple fall down so from that uh, he come up with the idea of this what we call gravity and so on and uh, the what we call the Newton the term Newton uh, come here the the, the, the term Newton uh, for the force come here because of uh, because of what we call the, the the weight of the the apple there the weight of the apple roughly the standard apple the weight is around 100 gram lah, 100 gram 100 gram so um, I don't have apple but okay let's say this thing right so this pair Okay, this weight for this is around 100 gram lah, 100 gram, let's say it's 100 gram. So, 1 Newton is the force that you feel if let's say you put this on your hand. So, that is 1 Newton, how it's feel 1 Newton. Because when you put uh, down, for example, let's say uh, I draw this apple, apple, and then you have this apple, and then you put it on this thing, you know that the what we call, they are like the force that is what we call, the 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 pull it uh, forward to on earth lah uh, this is uh, gravity gravity lah which is uh, around and you know gravity is the acceleration of gravity is 9.8 meter per square cube lah eh ah yalah meter per square cube so that is gravity and this apple is around what we call 100 gram let's say the standard apple is roughly 100 gram lah uh, roughly but depend on the apple lah if you have big apple then it's more than 100 gram so because force equal to m equal to ma so here if we calculate the f in kg so for the apple in kg will be what will be 0 0.1 0 0.1 kg and then you multiply it with the what we call this thing 9.8 meter square uh, this thing and then when you calculate that you get what get what huh? get what 9.8 eh? 1 Eh, 0 0.1 times 9.8 you get what uh, 0 0.98 so you will get around uh, 0 0.98 newton lah 
because kg meter over uh, square uh, kg meter uh, uh, kg meter this one kg uh, times meter square is basically uh, newton lah so it's basically 0 0.98 newton so it's roughly around 1 newton lah so that is the feeling when people ask you what is the feel of 1 newton is that feel lah because this thing eh? so that's the that tire that hole that, that push you down lah so that is force okay okay so when we talk about this thing okay so why we want to learn about this force thing why we want to learn about this thing the force is because when you deal with gravity especially when you deal with this gravity the gravity let me put when you deal with the uh, this gravity and also the electromagnetism whenever you deal with the gravity and electromagnetism normally you will see the force in action lah, the force okay they, they use the the term force there okay so that's why you need to familiar uh, also uh, what is force uh, actually okay okay let me go down what is okay this thing okay okay in fact both gravity eh? in fact both gravity and for example if you have a gravity here let's say i put the gravity let me put this thing let me put the gravity here gravity if you see gravity <coughs> the formula for gravity you learn in this what we call in the physics class also in your secondary school the formula for gravity is they have force also in front let me look in this thing they have force and also they are basically uh the the they have gravitical constant and then you have m1 m2 over r squared so this is basically the equation for gravity so you can see the in front there the f is the same newton and also the gravity also newton in fact if you look for the what we call for the uh, electromagnetism the, the electrical force uh, the electrical force electrical attraction uh, uh, force attraction electrical force so the the equation also more or less the same with the gravity so it's basically force also but now you have the k and then you have q1 q2 over r squared okay so you see the equation for gravity and the electrical force uh, under the umbrella of electromagnets is more or less the same so here you can see here the g there so here the g is uh, basically gravitational uh, constant so the amount for this gravitational constant is 6.7 times 10 to the power of negative 11 eh? negative 11 uh so uh the, the unit is basically meter cube what we call meter cube kg dot s negative two this you the, the unit you don't really need to know lah uh, just but the, the most important thing you need to know is that you see this thing that thing that's what's important you see the, the gravitational constant is so small lah. it's so small compared with the electrical constant if you see here the k here if I saw the K here, this K, so the K here is basically uh, around what we call 9 times 10 to the power of 9, eh? to the power of 9 Newton per meter over C uh, squared. I mean, the, the, at the back here, this back here, you don't need to know to be ni lah, to derive that. There are some variation, but you don't need to know lah. But what I want to point out here is this the magnitude of between the gravity and the electrical because these two things is two fundamental force that you are familiar with so you can see the gravitational constant which is the g is far far weaker than the electrical uh, attraction which is uh, here is uh, to the power of negative 11 this is to the power of 9 so it's far far stronger lah. that's why uh, you can sort of like uh, you if you have uh, electrostatic i mean you you sort of like even the magnet uh, the magnet also under the electromagnetism force you can sort of like uh, uh, you can sort of like what we call uh, pull something on the floor using magnet because the force of that magnet is stronger than the gravitational force that bring this everything down to the earth so that's what does it mean lah, this thing so the m1 and the m2 and q1 and q2 is basically the two different object lah so for example if you have this one uh, let me put this thing you have this uh, m1 
and then you have this M2 M2 so basically the attraction that thing the force that the attract the, the what we call the repulsion or the attraction is basically what is the feeling the force itself lah and the, what we call the distance here so here uh, let me put here in the distance so this thing so the distance here is R lah R okay so similarly with the what we call with the uh, this uh, electrical force if you have two charge for example where there is a uh, positive or negative let's say you have this charge the q1 and then you have another charge the q2 it's same like the uh, what we call the gravity but in this case no not here not here this is wrong the gravity the, all, the difference between the gravity and the electrical force, the gravity can only attract. Eh? It can only attract. It can only attract. Okay. So that is the, the, the difference between gravity and electrical charge. For the electrical charge, it can either attract. For example, either attract. So this is for the sake if let's say you have this positive, uh, positive and this is negative. That's fine. Lah, you know, right? But if you have this positive and positive, then it's repel. Lah. So this Q1, Q2, okay, it can repel each other lah. It can repel, it can repel each other. Similarly, if you have what we call the negative, negative, let's say the charge number one is also negative, and charge number two is also negative, it also can repel. So the difference between the gravity channel force and also the electrical force, the force that is your familiar in the in your life is that gravity is only attract. So this what we call is only attract lah, attract but but for the charge for the electrical charge it can attract it can attract and also it can also repel repel so that's the difference between uh, electrical and gravitational force about the charge huh? about the charge what is this q okay we know m you know m right m, m is just a mass <coughs> m is just the mass uh it just you can measure with uh, anything with the mass right uh, but what is Q? Let me talk about the Q first. The Q is electrical charge. Lah. Uh, in the atom, you have the electron and proton. Okay, you know the electron and proton, right? For in atom, let me draw a little bit here. So in atom, you know they are in the middle, they are nucleus, right? They are nucleus. And inside that, they are what we call, you have the proton. You have also the neutron there. Neutron is this. Neutron, you have the neutron. And also, uh, the thing that is revolved around it is basically the electron lah. Electron. So, this is basically what made up the atom lah. So, the proton here is positively charged. You know, this is basically positively charged lah. Positively charged lah. Charge. Positive lah. I put positive lah. It's positive. It's put positive. So, the Q is basically the amount of charge here. Yeah? So the, the 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 Q here the, the amount for the proton one proton is basically 1.6 uh, 1.6 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19 eh? negative 19 coulomb so this because it's positive so it's positive lah so it's positive so that is basically what is Q Q1 and so on so the proton any proton they carries this uh, amount of charge lah and the electron they, they are basically the same the, the, the amount is also same 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19 C but the magnitude is negative lah negative so that is basically what is the Q thing electron is negative right it's negative negative so when you have <coughs> two positive together it will repel when you have uh, opposite charge you will attract okay so that's why uh, the electron here it will not fly away uh, from the atom because that they, they are attraction pull eh? they are that they, they are pull of attraction between this and this proton and this thing okay so they are the pull between this so this is what we call the electromagnetic pull electron uh, the electrical pull eh? okay so so that's the thing <coughs> so that's the, the that's the basically the idea lah, the, the similarity between gravity and electrical force okay Okay, uh, let's go a little bit detail about the gravity. So this I make like this, much easier. Let me I put this thing, the, the, the division there. So it's easy for you to see. Okay, so let's talk about the gravity a little bit. Okay, so you can see right, gravity like a force. Okay, about the gravity, uh, 
about the gravity about the gra- gravity about the gravity the first thing is that <coughs> it's only noticeable the gravity if you see the what we call the the equation there g and then m1 m2 over r squared is only the first thing is that you need to know is that it's only noticeable noticeable if they are what we call if you deal with the very large mass if you deal with the very very large mass lah, uh, when you deal with large masses masses okay because why because if you see the equation you have g there you have g there and g is so small so in order for you to feel the force the mass must be very very uh, big if you let's say i have these two thing eh, these two kapal eh, these two uh, whatever thing they are actually they are gravitational attraction between these two because gravity one of the thing about gravity is happen uh, the range for the gravity is infinite meaning that the gravity permeate the universe mean that whatever in the universe they they have this they feel the gravity for example between this and this they are for example gravitational attraction imagine this a white one is m1 this red one is m2 they are gravitational attraction between this thing but because the mass is so so because the mass the weight for this is so low and because the constant the g the big g there is so low so meaning that you don't really feel it's not really significant lah it's not really significant the attraction is the gravitational attraction is not significant because uh, the mass itself cannot sort of like skew this what we call this uh, the, the the gravitational constant there which is so low but if you deal with something that is so big for example the earth for example you have for example you have this uh, what we call the earth and then you you on top of that you on top of that so eh mana pos ni gambar macam ni 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 earth okay so for example like this so the earth so this the earth let's say this the earth this the earth so earth we put it as m2 and your you yourself let's say this is fidaus where is the other one let me find the one maybe he's uh, wait ah uh, let me find fidaus where is the siapa sama ni maybe uh, internet problem with that guy anyway siapa sama kita uh, one as far one as far if uh, you are there uh, please if uh, somebody see one as far in the feed please tell me eh? so i can pin it again maybe it's disconnect okay so you have us and then you have you let's say this is fidaus eh? fidaus fidaus and we call it m1 eh? m1 okay so if you look at the equation so equation and you see the equation f g m1 m2 over r squared so the distance between this is r eh? so for example the distance between fidaus and the core of the earth is uh, what we call the nilah the r the r the r okay so because the earth mass is so big because the earth itself is so big so then you can feel the gravitational force the fidaus can feel the gravitational force gravitational force okay so there are attraction because gravity only attract so fidaus will be attracted to the core of the earth and that's why you will stuck so if let's say fidaus try to jump on earth then it will sort of like uh, at most the fidaus for example at most let's say you jump let's say the fidaus jump so at most the fidaus can jump for let's say maybe 1 meter just 1 meter and then after that he will sort of like go back lah to the, uh, the, the 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 on earth lah because of this gravitational pull okay the earth is that big but if let's say fidaus go to the moon okay the moon is a uh, less smaller lah less smaller than the earth okay the moon is less smaller than the earth let's say this the moon is less smaller than the earth this is not on the scale but anyway you get the idea so let's say this moon so in this case if let's say the fidaus jump the fidaus can jump far far higher lah than this because of why because of the gravitational constant for the moon uh, the gravitational pull on moon is less very less lah. so you can maybe fidaus can jump far far higher maybe six feet or maybe six meter or whatever lah meaning that it depend on the gravitational pull lah. so as you can see it's only noticeable if you deal with the large mass okay 
so this is uh, one as far is there oh yeah yeah let me pin you pin okay so so that's the thing that okay okay so all these things the force itself you can calculate eh? you can calculate so you have g and then you have m for example let's say mass for fidaus maybe 60 68 kilograms so you put 68 and then for m2 for the earth maybe you find the what we call the 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 the, the mass for our earth and then you can find also the the distance the, the diameter for the earth find the radius and then you can sort of like get the 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 nila the amount for f lah okay so that that's the nila that's about this thing uh is uh what we call it's so i can say that it's only noticeable with the large mass and also it's attract so it's only noticeable with the mass and also is only attract so i put here it's only attract okay so the question to ponder here the question to ponder here if let's say the gravity always attract why then you have um, uh, your earth and then you have let's say this the moon the moon the moon why then the moon not crash to earth if let's say gravity happen to all why then the moon don't crash to us so that is the question to ponder lah so so, so that's uh, for you to find out lah because you see the gravity always uh, attract the fidaus jump and then we go down back uh, but why then moon our moon doesn't crash to us so that's something you need to ponder lah uh, but you that's you find yourself lah uh is have something to do with uh, velocity and so on okay uh the two the second thing uh so so let me put here lah let me put here second it's only attract eh? attract so let me this thing eh? it's only attract this is question to ponder so i just put like this put like this okay the second uh, properties of gravity is uh, don't uh, attract is just what, what what we call the is so this basically I put here lah. this thing I think I put here lah. so then it's much easy so the second properties of uh, gravity is only attract and the question to ponder is then if that this case why the moon cannot crash to the earth okay the third properties of the what we call uh, gravity is permeate is basically is exert it exert force throughout the throughout the universe the universe meaning that everything is subject to the gravity okay everything is subject to gravity for example uh, the moon the sky whatever is uh, subject to the uh, gravity so that's uh, properties of the uh, what we call the gravity okay so that's i think is enough lah for the gravity okay uh, because uh, i just want to uh, what we call to correlate with this uh, equation only okay because this equation relate to uh, more or less the same with the equation for electric force this electric force is what uh, is more important lah for you to understand uh, in this material world lah. gravity i mean it's very weak it's very weak so it's not really uh, much uh, ni lah, much concern lah. so let's talk about the electrical force lah. electrical force electromagnetism eh. electromagnetism okay let me draw like this okay so let me draw like that so electromagnetism okay okay so let me bring this thing let me copy this thing let me copy this thing control c control c and then i go down 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 control v control v okay so that is the what we call the uh, formula for force for uh, how to charge this is a formula that say that how to uh, charge uh, attract uh, attract attract or repel repel each other lah each other each other okay 
So this for only static charge lah. This, this what we call uh, we call it Coulomb law, whatever this thing. Uh, anyway, it's just same like gravity. If you have two charges uh, far apart or near apart, and then you can uh, measure the force between them. Okay, the force. Okay. Okay. Um, so this two charge. When I say two charge, you you normally uh, what we call familiar with the charge when you talk about the electric, right? Uh, when we talk, let me put this. When we talk about the electric, when we talk about the electric, electric, then uh, sort of like you know there are different charge, the positive charge, the negative charge. But then the question, what, why, why there are magnetism here? Why there are magnetism here? Why don't they just say the electrical force? Why they must say electromagnetism, electromagnet force rather than just electro electrical force? Okay, because we know the electrical force, they have, uh, they, they, they happen because of what we call the electric that you see is become of the movement of electron towards the what we call the the uh, from the one uh, end, the positive end to the negative end. So we know the electrical charge is occur because you have positive and also negative charge. So and also this, uh, so you have this uh, attraction, and also you have this re repulsion. And also you have this repulsion okay so you know the this is electrical charge okay you have the charge uh, the electron or what we call the proton because proton is also electrically charged it's a positive charge as we said before proton this proton here this proton carry the electrical charge uh, this proton eh? this proton carry the electrical charge the positive electrical charge the electron carry the negative uh, what we call a negative electrical charge this 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 amount lah so that's why uh, we say this electrical charge lah but what about the magnetism why why they are the term magnetism there why they combine them together the reason then the reason is that if you have a, a moving charge then you sort of like create the what we call elect, a magnetic magnetic field lah if you have moving charge okay so if you have moving charge, the reason why they put magnet here is because when you have when you have moving charge, moving charge, you basically induce induce a, a magnetic field, magnetic field, eh? magnetic field. Okay, uh, it's easy for you. Let me put like this lah. Let me I can let me bring you. Let me let me bring you this here first. Eh? Let me bring you here first. Uh, it's basically like this. So this is the thing. Uh, let's say you have this uh, this thing. So that is basically the what we call the the the, the compass only. The compass only. Hey, diam, diam. Okay, kita diam lah. Okay, so that's compass only. And in front of me, I have this what we call the just a battery, and then it's just a wire. It's just a wire. And then I want to see uh, where is the magnet come from. Eh? You know that if you put a magnet on the compass, the, the, the dial will be moved, right? So if I take this, it's just a wire, just simple wire. I put that there. And then I have this thing. This just, I, I connect this thing. You can see the thing will be moved. It's just very small. Eh? But they are moved. Ah, yeah, they are movement, right? So even though they are no magnet, they are sort of like uh, what we call uh, movement of what we call uh, the, the 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 needle because of the electric flow around that. Okay, so that's why we are saying that when you have electric movement, then they are also it create also magnetic field. So the scientists combine them together because it's it's the same thing. It's like two sides of the same coin. Okay, when you have this moving electron, then you have this magnetic uh, field also. So that's the reason lah. That's the reason why they sort of like combine this electromagnet, electromagnet lah, electromagnet. And even if you think about it, everything atom, eh, everything. What is the thing? Uh, for example, every atom in the universe, every atom have. If you see the atom, uh, you have this thing, you have this positive, and then you have this what we call. Uh, what is the thing? You have this electron negative. This electron also moving, eh? electron also moving, uh, and then you have the neutron here, neutron here. So this is the 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 the, the standard atom model lah. You have the positive proton and also the negative electron. 
the electron is moving. So if you think about it, if the electron is moving, electron is attached to the uh, the the core of the nucleus for the atom, then why don't everything which is made of atom be magnetic? Because as you see just now, if you have the electrical charge that is moving, then you can induce some magnetism. But then the question now, if everything made of atom and inside the atom you have the electron whizzing around the nucleus, meaning that the electron is moving, why don't everything magnetic? Understand or not my question? Uh, my, um, yelah, my, my, uh, do you understand? Right. Because just now we see that the, what we call? Because when you connect the, when you connect just now, when you see just now the, what we call, this thing, when I have this, what we call this battery, and then I connect with the, what we call, the wire, and then you have sort of like the needle of what we call, the compass so this is the compass this compass when you try to connect the wire the electrical uh, the electron move round no, electron move when electron move they create the electrical uh, the magnetic field uh, magnetic field so the question now if let's say uh, this thing everything made of atom and inside the atom there are electron so electron move also uh, revolving the nucleus so why then not everything become magnetic if that's the case? So in order to answer that, uh, you need to understand that this, uh, uh, in order to answer why not everything is magnetic, you need to see at the particle level, uh, at the particle level. You need to understand at the particle level. Uh, because one of the properties of material is magnetism. Uh, uh, we learned about before, uh, in metal, you have some metal that is magnetized. They are in polymer, they are not magnetized and so on. So one of the properties of material, because you learn about material science, right, is magnetism. So you need to you need to able to, to answer if people ask you, if let's say moving electron create the magnetic field, why don't everything become magnetis, magnetized? So to answer that, first you need to see at the particle level first. Huh? At the particle level, you see there are the, the, the proton, the proton is made from the quark right at the particle level that's why we learned about the particle before and the electron electron is just electron lah electron is just is elementary particle itself so this thing this quark and electron this quark and electron have their own uh, what we call uh, uh, we we know that they have their own electrical charge but also because electrical charge this quark and electron they have a properties huh? They have the mass, you can measure the mass. They have also the charge, the charge. Uh, you see the charge just now, eh? the amount of charge, but they, that's one of the properties of the quarks and electron. They also have these properties, what we call, the third one is a moment, eh? moment or spin, or spin, 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 moment or spin lah. Meaning that they have this, uh, the, 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 the electron can be uh, flip over lah. This one, this is just like a quantum properties of any uh, of this quark and electron lah. They have a spin. So, each particle, so because quark make a proton, so proton have this uh, magnet that is like acting like the tiny, tiny magnet. We can see that the proton and the electron itself, okay, uh, acting as like a tiny, tiny magnet lah tiny tiny magnet but in the atom this thing this uh, tiny tiny magnet is cancelled out because if you see later on when we talk in the future lah, when we talk about the atomic orbital uh, I think you have seen before uh, you have seen before that when we you have learned right about orbital before Alia have you learned about orbital before are you learn, do you learn it now in the chemistry no. What do you know about orbital? You know like orbital because uh, because I touch this because you are in chemical engineering so that's why I touch because it's more like chemistry. So in the orbital there are certain amount of atom a certain amount of electron can fill the orbital eh? and I think you may have seen something like this something like this up and down like this up and down i don't know maybe you have seen this right so we will discuss further about this lah this energy level about the why there are only two uh electron 
because this uh, arrow uh, signify the electron why there are only two electron per energy level and so on so that's we discuss later on but i believe you have seen this have you seen this before this sort of like uh, you have seen like so they are basically spin lah, up and down and so on so in the field orbital because the uh, yeah i hope you remember a little bit you remember lah about orbital if not i will discuss about orbital in detail later on in the orbital for example let's say you have this uh, carbon eh? carbon you have six so you have the nucleus here nucleus nucleus you have uh, nucleus you have six lah. one two three four five six six proton and also six uh six what you call six neutron uh, one two three four five six six neutron carbon six ka? let me see carbon six i don't remember carbon is it six or not carbon carbon so you see carbon so you have four five six okay four five six eh? so six eh? so meaning that you have the two orbital you have the s orbital and also the p orbital i don't know whether you understand still understand right still get it so you this two is uh the s orbital the four is the p orbital so basically the electron they cannot just move here and there they have orbital uh in in the ball structure you may be familiar with this this thing one and two eh? there are two for this carbon you have this electron let's say i draw this two electron here and then you have four electrons outside four electrons outside this is basically what we call the orbital lah. orbital although it's not orbit lah, it's orbital orbital so that's what does it mean by this what does it mean by you have two here and this two four here the two is a s orbital the four is a p orbital uh, we will discuss further about why this s and for p later on but enough to know for now uh electron they cannot sit in the middle they cannot sit in the middle they must be in their orbital okay so if you see the first orbital the n equal to one the first orbital here the s orbital or the in this case s orbital so in this s orbital the electron here they feel the what we call as if they feel the eh, what am i doing they f they are the orbital is filled the penuh lah the penuh and you see the electron have this spin eh so they are sort of like cancel out the what we call the magnetism that they create because i said before every particle the one of the properties is uh, moment eh the spin so if let's say you have one up and one down they sort of like cancel each other so that's the idea of that thing lah so when they cancel each other they are no sort of like no no what we call no magnetism they, they don't feel this magnetism they, they cancel out lah the magnetism uh, properties cancel out okay but if you see this the the top orbital here this this thing this is this is the p orbital p orbital and p orbital normally you have three you have three like this you have three like this okay if you are not if you are blur here if you forget about what this orbital and so on i will discuss this uh, later further lah but for time being just accept that the p orbital they have this uh they have this uh what we call this three thing instead of one huh? so you can feel at least six maximum six for uh, uh for what i call for the for for the p orbital so when you want to feel the electron you need to feel one by one so one here and then one here and then one here and then so you just feel three and then the number four go down go down like that so you can see they are like for example these two thing eh, so if you if you see here this two thing is unpair you can see the electron is not pair for this uh the, this thing so this cause there are some magnetism happen lah. some magnetism happen some uh, some tiny magnetism happen lah because the uh, not the uh, yeah the electron doesn't cancel out uh, the the magnetic the moment itself so if you see the product table here if you look product table here let me make it full okay if you look at product table here normally the one in the so this product table is is sort of like is uh, it's arranged in terms of orbital now. this thing this one and two here one and two here this one is s uh, s orbital this one this one you nampak tak saya punya tangan ni bergerak ni nampak nampak kan 
So this 1 and 2 here, this is S orbital. Okay, this S orbital. This one from here to here, this is P orbital. This is P orbital here. Yeah? I think ada kot gambar kot. Sekejap. Uh, orbital, orbital periodic table. Senang malah nak fikir eh. Uh, ada gambar tak? Ada gambar tak? Ada gambar. Ah ni. Ah nampak tak? Sebab ada gambar. Mana ah, gambar? Hilang lah. Ah tu. You nampak tu? Okay. You have this S orbital, D orbital, P orbital, F, F orbital. The idea of orbital is that only certain amount of electron can sit there. Okay. So S, P, D, F. And if you see here, the S and P orbital, normally they are sort of like, if you see at the side here, they are normally full lah. For example, if you go to the side here, let's say you go side here, normally the orbital more or less full. Same with the S, if you go to the side, normally they are full. They are full. But here for D, the valence electron, the, the, the outermost orbital is normally not full. Uh, full or not full, here lah, like this. Like the one that I show you here, is unpair lah. It's, um, it's not full. Okay. So if you look here, if you look, look here back, this uh, picture, uh, you rarely see the thing in this group, the S group, become magnetic. Okay. And also you rarely see the thing in this part become magnetic. Okay. But here, because the D orbital have more, more, what we call more energy level. So here, here also they are not much. Here also not much. But in the middle here, in the middle here, there are many uh, unfilled orbital. Okay. And because of this unfilled orbital, the electron cannot cancel out. So that's why you can see metal can be uh, magnetic. That's why metal, especially the iron, eh, iron, cobalt, and nickel that we see before, this thing have uh, many unfilled orbital. So the spin cannot cancel out uh, and make this thing uh, ni lah, uh, magnetic. Okay, so that's one of the idea for that lah. One of the idea for that. So we can say in the periodic table, in periodic table, in periodic table, okay, in periodic table, for example, uh, atom, uh, what I call, uh, those who have this, those who got nearly, nearly fill or full, fully filled orbital they are not magnetic lah not magnetic not magnetic so that's what normally happen lah but just because okay but just because they are unfilled but you need to understand also just because just because it's uh, unfilled for example like this thing carbon here carbon here it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that the 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 material the atom itself the material material become magnetic magnetic okay because uh <coughs> because uh, uh this have something to do with the crystal eh? okay first we see eh? first we see uh, they are particle level particle level and then they are at atomic level atomic level okay so you see the particle level we know that uh, we mentioned before that everything like quarks and uh, electron have their spin and at atomic level we talk about this uh, orbital okay so why uh, the unfilled electron is more magnetic than filled fill, uh, orbital and then but even though you have something like this, this is carbon, right? Even though you have something like this, but you see carbon, carbon is not magnetic. Okay, carbon is not magnetic. So, if you have, even though you have unfilled orbital, it doesn't mean that your material become magnetic automatically. Because remember, because at the macro level, we can say macro level, at macro level, macro level, you need to deal something with uh, what we call crystal. crystal. Okay, imagine that all this thing, all this carbon, 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 uh, is a tiny magnet. Eh? It's a tiny magnet. So all this thing, the atom inside this thing, they can be sort of like 
arrange either uh, in a range like this let's say we, we imagine this carbon eh? we imagine it's carbon or whatever atom like a tiny magnet because we said any unfilled orbital the atom sort of like have this magnetic properties but when the atom arrange in the material you can see you can see that atom can be do like this so imagine that the atom is like magnet the atom can be like this all sort of like sort of like uh, have this all the ar arrangement have this uh, what we call the net positive direction okay so this basically the, the in the crystal the atom can arrange themselves in such a way that the spin moment uh, arrange like this in one net direction up okay so this what make thing become a uh, magnetic lah magnetic 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 but you also have the case that what we call the what we call the crystal the atom itself they arrange not like that but like this instead of like that they, they arrange like this they arrange like alternate up and down up and down up and down okay so it's cancelled out so this what we call anti-magnetic anti uh anti what we call anti anti-magnetic lah anti-magnetic uh, or i think the better word is not magnetic they are term there they are ferro we call it ferromagnetic ferromagnetic magnetic okay so this is anti ferro magnetic ferromagnetic okay and also the are case also that the atom they just they just jumble around like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, and so on. So you have this because I show this like a magnet, lah, like this magnet. Lah. You have the uh, what we call uh, north and south pole because I want to view each atom is like carries like the magnet. Lah. So because the atom also arranged to make a solid, so I just want to show you how the atom can arrange in a solid. Okay when you see the atom is perfectly aligned we call it crystal lah. so this is another way the atom can arrange in the solid so it just mess around like this mess around here 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 so this what we call uh, para paramagnetic paramagnetic magnetic okay so the ferromagnetic example of the what we call the thing that uh, the metal that have ferromagnetic thing is like uh, iron ferrum lah ferrum nickel cobalt that we learned before when we deal with the metal before we talk about this uh, what we call the the how iron how nickel how cobalt can what we call can can uh, induce the magnetism the reason because of this lah because the atom inside the iron can align themselves in such a way that the magnetic field is created okay and the magnetic field is created because of this ampere electron and this uh, at the particle level every particle carries some uh, spin moment so that's uh, the reason why not all material magnetic not all metal is magnetic because some metal can have this perfect alignment some metal can have what we call this uh, they have this magnetic uh, they have this ampere uh, orbital ampere electron but then the alignment they cancel each other so it become anti uh, anti magnetic for example like chromium chromium is metal but then inside the chromium the what we call they, they cancel each other okay so this is like what we call not magnetic lah so that's the and the magnetism is basically one of the properties of material so when people ask you why this material is have this magnetic properties you can answer lah. you can sort of like answer uh, you need to discuss but in order to answer truly you need to discuss in particle from the particle level atomic level and so on uh, so i will continue further later on about this uh, uh, why i go a little bit detail because i want to discuss about magnetism eh? magnetism is one of the properties of material so you need to know why there are magnetism in certain uh, thing and why there are no magnetism in the certain uh, material so this is the reason for that lah uh, 
uh, that's one thing lah. Uh, but also even here, you need to understand lah. Not every iron, iron is just besi lah. Not every iron is magnet. Okay, there are iron. For example, let's say this iron. So this also iron. Uh, this also iron. This iron. This there are no magnet. So even though this iron is not like totally magnetized. Okay, because uh, The crystal alone is not enough to explain that. You need to go to the domain, domain also, domain also. Because even though inside the crystal, let's say this thing, let's say you have something like this. Let's say this is the iron. Ah, this this thing, this thing. I go away. Okay. Let's say the crystal. So this crystal boundary. Ah, so this crystal boundary, meaning that, uh, if let's say you have this. Something like this, 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 something like this. It's fine, but then you have many crystal grain inside this thing, inside the metal. So maybe the the second is like this. So in order for it to be magnetized, you cannot you cannot get like this. You must have everything aligned. You must have everything aligned like this. For example, you have a crystal, so you must have something like everything must be in one face. In one phase, in order for it to become ferromagnetic, so this then okay ferromagnetic, okay, because if you see the what we call the magnet itself, there are only one north and one south. So you need the tiny tiny magnet, uh, which is the mon the atom itself must be aligned in in certain way. If you have this, let's say this is a carbon carbon uh, and not carbon lah, this iron ferrum ferrum. If the ferrum itself Inside the ferrum, you have something like this. Then it's not magnetic lah, because the the tiny tiny magnet there is not in one direction. But is the ferrum the same ferrum? This ferrum, this also ferrum. But is the same ferrum have this aligned what we call aligned uh, net direction? Then you get this what we call. Then only then you get this magnetic properties. If this case. This not um, because each one each green boundaries. So this one I call it this thing. We call it the domain lah, domain or green boundaries, uh, green 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 or domain lah, green or domain. Because you need to remember everything like this, like metal or whatever. It doesn't the atom doesn't be like one block. It is like a, made of a tiny tiny grain. If you see in, under the microscope, uh, let's say. Um, Metal green. If you see under the microscope, you see something like this, ah. Eh? So it's not made up. This is not made up. Uh, the 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 atom doesn't sort of like doesn't sit perfectly in one uh row like that. They have many boundaries there. Many boundaries, many boundaries, many boundaries. So each boundaries, inside each boundary, you can see there a perfect alignment for one thing. So Each boundary we call it one crystal lah, one crystal, one crystal. In order for what we call for thing to be magnetized, the atom inside each boundary must have this uh, net direction to certain uh, ni lah, certain direction lah, in order for it to be magnetized. So if you have iron itself like this, normal iron, normal besi, it's not necessarily it become uh, what we call magnetic. It's it not necessarily magnetic, but if you have Iron and also everything inside that is what we call uh, point toward one direction. Then it can be ferromagnetic. But this iron, even though you have the inside this iron, some maybe something like this. If you have magnet here, you try to rub there. It will sort of like bringing this thing, everything. It will sort of like uh, align all this thing together. Okay, if you have the magnet and then you try to rub it. You can make this thing become magnetic because you sort of like try. It's sort of like each one of it, it try to realign themselves, and then when this realign, it will also it will cause the chain reaction to this. This also will try to align. This try to align to one direction when you do like this. So that's why uh, 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 iron like this. If you have a magnet, you try to do like this. This become magnetic also because what you do by Do that. This is basically you try to sort of like to change the direction for of this uh, tiny tiny magnet inside the what we call the the metal. Okay, I think it's already enough lah. It's nine thirty dah. 
So uh, what we learn today? Okay, let me make it bigger like this. Okay, what we learn today is basically this. Huh? Uh, what we learn today is we learn about <coughs> uh, gravity and electromagnetism. Okay, we uh, learn about the basic of gravity. We learn about the electromagnetism. We learn about the how uh, electrical charge can induce the magnetic field and so on. Um, we learn about some of the what we call the equation for the magnet and for the gravity this gravity electromagnetism we we explain about this equation the what is electrical charge okay how the electrical charge can sort of like induce the the magnetic field and also we go a little bit detail about how this electric and magnetic connect with each other i mean at the molecular level uh, because this is uh, relate to one of the properties of material that is magnetism if you look at our first class first class and uh, not first class the class that i draw this thing draw this thing okay when i draw this thing you can see there one of the properties of material is magnetic so at least now you can see lah, uh, why uh, thing is magnetic and so on it's a properties of material so uh, i think uh, for for today uh, uh, i want to maybe i just uh, the question time only for those because there are no time uh, only for for alicia dan nika pin at pin only for those who open the camera eh? okay so the question time only one question only only for those who open the camera because I want to save time. It's already 9.33. So, I don't want to take your time. So, yeah. Question time. So, let's go for the question time. Question time. Okay. Explain what you learned before, today. <laughs> Briefly summarize what you learned today. Okay. Anyone who open the camera? Only one question today. Eh? Briefly explain what you learned today in five minutes what you learned today okay anyone Fidaus, Alicia, Asfa, Alia briefly explain what you learned today Fidaus, okay Fidaus, okay Fidaus today we learned about um uh first scale particle that is photon, muon, with w boson and z boson, which uh we have four category that is gravity, electromagnetism, strong force and weak force. Uh photon for electromagnetism, muon for strong force and w and z boson for weak force. So. Firstly, we learn about force. How force is um, found by uh, Isaac Newton. Then we learn about uh, gravity. Uh, first, we learn about how gravity is um, uh, how gravity is applied at uh, moon and Earth. Why uh, we when we jump at the Earth, then we will go back to the Earth because of the gravity pull that have at um, Earth that pull us to the Earth's map then we learn about electrical force that uh, in electrical force we learn about ma ma electromagnetism that which when they have a positive and negative charge it will attract and if the charge is same like positive and positive negative negative it will repel. Uh, example of the electromagnetism is like in an uh, atom, they have electron and proton. Proton have positive charge and electron have negative charge. So if they have two, neg uh, two different charges, it will uh, attract. So after that, we learn about uh, how the metal has magnetic properties. We have orbital that uh, if uh, the first orbital we call S orbital and the second orbital we call S P orbital. Uh, why uh, some uh, 
um, metal have magnetic uh, properties because of the uh, orbital the uh, peak the because of the unfeel of the orbital. Uh, that's uh, what my explanation. Okay, thank you, Fidaus. Okay, um, uh, before we go, uh, can uh, can what we call can those who open the camera see the camera so that I can take a picture for thumbnail <laughs> because I don't know when is the thing. So let me put this thing and let me put this thing. Uh, so I just have to scale. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Let me put the camera in lah. What put the camera? What put the camera? What put the camera? So, yeah, okay, for those who, uh, who uh, please uh, see the camera, at least you can remember when you see the picture, you can remember this is because, uh, due to what, okay, so be colorful, colorful, okay, tengok, uh, look at the camera, eh? okay, okay, one, two, three, okay, thank you, so uh, that's it for today, we end our class with the session of Tasbih Kafara and Suratul Asr.